Today we are checking back in with Shiba Inu Sheepcoin, performing some technical analysis and making some predictions on where we can expect to see Sheep go in the near future. Let's get into it. Welcome into the Sheeb chart guys if you'd like to buy Sheeb or want some free Bitcoin there are a couple of links down in the description of today's video and it has been as you can see quite some time since we last took a look at Sheeb in fact I believe the last time we took a look at Sheeb was on the 9th of February and we thought a flag pattern was forming and we were going to break out quite quickly to move up to this point over here sitting at about 3933 unfortunately our prediction was wrong and that happens sometimes that's fine but what we did see was a flag that actually extended significantly longer than what we anticipated the flag formed in this sort of a pattern it wasn't just a straight down it was a bit more of a long-term flag as you can see over here and it looked like you know potentially we were going to be able to break out from it and we did at one point after, of course, unfortunately, you know, moving down a little bit. But it was this style of a flag. And that is a bullish flag pattern, which makes this all the more interesting. Why did we fail on the 17th of February? We'd managed to break out. We had a retest of the top end of the flag point, and then we dropped. Well, simply, it's because the overall crypto market dropped as well. And it dropped quite significantly. It took a relatively decent hit on this period of time and over the course of the next week or so. So unfortunately, the conditions just simply weren't right for Sheeb at that point in time. So let's get rid of some of this guff over here. We don't need that at the moment. What we need to establish is what is the current trend. Now, of course, we know our overall downtrend was broken back over there. So let's just get rid of that one. Let's get rid of these lines as well and see we have a bit more clarity we have these horizontal points of resistance still up here long term and of course our support points as well right now we have really i suppose a few relevant points of support i'd say the most relevant right now is sitting down here and that's at that 1695 mark so i'm going to place that one down shuck it right there that is really the ultimate point of support at this point in time. Our one up here, which was sitting over at about 2320, unfortunately, this failed, and it's only failed within the past few days. And I really think the reason it's failed is because we've had that death cross occur. We've had that 20 day moving average, not only cross below the 200 day moving average after, you know, crossing above that in the 50 day, but then it crossed back below both of them as well. So that's really unfortunate. and. As a result, we've dropped now to a value of 2202. So that's basically where we are sitting from a horizontal perspective. Right now, I'm actually going to get rid of this horizontal point of what used to be resistance turned into support and then failed again. I don't think there is enough relevance at this point in time for that to be in place. What I can see though, is we have a short term downtrend starting from the 7th of February where we hit that nice little peak and it has now started moving in a downwards direction. You can see we've got one, two, three, four key touch points signaling that there is certainly a downtrend in place there. And it's downtrending in this sort of a channel. You can see basically we are on the move, you know, straight downwards like that. I do think potentially we could extend it out a bit more, but I'm more inclined to place it probably about there, that's more accurate. We did drop out of it at one point in time, but came back into that downtrend. This is the focus at this point in time. So we really need to watch what happens with this channel. It's looking like we're moving straight down the center of it at this point, And it does also look like our volume is significantly dropping off, indicating that the sellers may be starting to dry out a bit. But as we know, this has happened on a few different occasions. You know, sellers dried out over here, of course, and we pumped up, but we came back down. Hopefully, what we start to see are higher lows. So what are high lows? High lows are basically where, you know, even though we get this fluctuation of the market like this, 
each dip is not as low as the last. And if we're able to do that and able to put in place this, I suppose, theory of having higher lows, potentially we could have a bit of a trend, something like that. Now, I can't establish this trend at the moment. There's not enough touch points. I mean, even if I went like that, we've broken through that trend. I genuinely don't think that it would be wise of me or I suppose even accurate of me to do so. So I'm not gonna put in place anything at the moment. But right now, what we need to be looking at is other indicators. What we're seeing on the chart at the moment is not actually too helpful. We're moving downwards. We can see that it's clear, but not much else is happening apart from obviously that 20 day moving average crossing below everything once again after we thought we saw a bit of a pump. So let's have a look at the RSI. And the RSI for us is showing that after we had that big pump, of course, we hit 69.50, we've now fallen all the way down to a value of 40.67. So we're on the lower end of things. There is room to still continue in a downwards direction, but the volume to me is indicating that it's coming to a change. Now, if we do manage to come back up and test this point up here on our top end of our channel, which is sitting probably at about, you know, that 2280 mark, we do have a chance of breaking out and moving quite in a big direction. So hopefully that is what we do see, but based on the RSI alone, we can't determine that. MACD, let's have a quick look. Now, on the MACD, we quite clearly are moving downwards on both the 12 day and the 26 day EMAs. And when we saw a real big red period was when that cross occurred. And of course, when we started moving up, it was when the cross occurred in the other direction. Now, whilst we are moving downwards, these two lines are close at this point in time. And this red period, there's not much more sellers than there is buyers. So all in all, what I'm expecting to see is potentially over the next week or so, we will see a cross of the 12 day MA above the 26 day MA. That will support the theory that I have here, that we're gonna go for a test of that top end of the channel and potentially a little pump. Now, where do I think the pump will hit? Well, in my opinion, if it continues for a few days, I think the 200 day moving average would be a reasonable target. Therefore, today's price prediction, best case scenario is that 200 day moving average. Worst case scenario, I'd say we're still gonna test the top end of this trading channel at probably about 2280, but I can't foresee that until this happens, we'll continue moving downwards. I think the sellers are starting to dry up a bit too much, but of course the key here is we need to break through this downtrending channel. Otherwise, we are unfortunately going to keep moving in the same downwards direction. That wraps up today's analysis on Sheep, guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. Of course, if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you do leave a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of this sort of content, hit subscribe and turn on those bell notifications. I'll leave it there for today, guys. I hope you have an awesome day. I'll see you next time. Cheers.